welcome everybody to Big Daddy Unlimited Studios. Today we got a special guest in our studios. We have Don Mann. He's a best-selling author. He also happens to be a guy who was a member of SEAL Team 6, 2, and 1, and probably a whole bunch of other stuff that he's not allowed to talk about. He was a SEAL Team medic. He's had uh, experience all around the world, not only in the military, but also as a public speaker. He's a big supporter of law enforcement and the military. And we're proud to have him here today to talk to us for a few minutes, a little bit about his experience, and also about something special that he wants to talk to us and to our audience and our members about today. Yeah, Don? Thanks, Tony. It's, yeah, it's nice welcome, to be here. Welcome, welcome, yeah. You know, I'm excited about everything you have in this bag, everything in this go bag. If I could, I'd like to talk a minute about a go Absolutely. bag. Absolutely. In the military, they're using it every day now, government contractors use them. And a go bag is just something you have with you everywhere you go. And this might be bigger than some go bags. Sometimes they're this big. But a go bag is something you have in your backpack, your purse, your glove compartment, and it's essentials. Something you might need if something bad happens. And for us, for these, this purpose today, this go bag here has a great selection of combat medical uh, equipment and protective equipment. Um, well, what's one of the reasons today, I mean, I can understand why the guys in the military might need a go bag, something to grab and go because, you know, they're in combat situations, but why would the average person, you know, the housewife, the guy who's going to work, a uh, student going to school, why would they need something like that today? I could say in the last three months, in the last three months, we got caught unprepared and this virus hit us, and all of a sudden, everybody needs a hand, hand sanitizer. Everybody needs a mask. And now violence in our cities has soared, so now we have to defend ourselves. We can't, the, as, as great of a job the police do, we call them after the accident or after the emergency. We have to defend our families and our, and our communities. So I think now, more than ever, we should be able to take care of ourselves, protect ourselves, and if there is an injury, there might be a car accident on your way home, your daughter, your child might fall down the stairs, have medical equipment so you can take care of the emergency until life, um, you know, life uh, saving uh, f people come along to help you. So everything on this table, most people can use. If you had an accident that happened in your home and you don't have life saving equipment, just imagine what could happen. It's so easy to have a couple pieces of equipment that can save lives and know how to use it, have it in the trunk of your car, have it in your glove compartment, and have it at home. So, so this is kind of like basically your first responder kit because as we always tell people, you're your own first responder. The problem is like you just said, when we call the police or when we call law enforcement or somebody to come save us, they're usually coming after the fact. And especially nowadays with everything that's going on and people calling to defund the police, I mean, think about the response times. What are you gonna do if it's five, 10, 15, 30 minutes? God forbid it's a gunshot wound or, or something like you said, if you just fall down or, and you hurt yourself, what do you do? And, and do you have stuff to be able to respond to that to help stabilize that person until help can arrive? That's right. People can bleed out in four minutes and you can have a broken leg and not even see any bleeding because the fracture happened inside and the skin's not broken, so there isn't any sign of bleeding or fracture, but you could cut an artery or a large vessel, and the person can be bleeding out. And all you have to do is know a couple simple steps and have the right equipment, and you can save that person's life. And as a combat medic, I've used this all my life, but also being on the streets as a civilian, there are many, many times in my life I've needed life-saving equipment to save somebody in a medical situation, usually car accidents, people uh, with all types of accidents, but to have a little bit of knowledge, medical knowledge, and to have the equipment is able to save many lives. Absolutely. And Don's a perfect example of all of us who are preppers out there. This is one of the guys you want on your team because a lot of us don't know anything about medical <laughs> stuff. So it's always important to have a medic involved with whatever you're doing in your preparations. So Tony, this, this uh, if I could just make a couple comments Absolutely. about yeah, go. You're the some star. of the things we have here in this go bag. We have it outlined here. So we have Purify hand sanitizer. And this is pretty remarkable because 
usually I would keep hand sanitizer in my pocket and apply it eight, nine, ten times a day anytime I'm in a dirty place or touching something. This here, you put it on once and it lasts 24 hours. Let me ask you about this. Is this something also you could use in a situation where there's an accident and there's bleeding and you need to sterilize your hands or the area that you're about to work on? Absolutely. Well, you, what I would do with this here, hopefully there would be gloves in your medical kit. Uh, so if you're touching someone else's blood or body fluids, you have gloves on. But I would put this on right after for sure. And if you're treating a wound, you could put that on the wound as well. Um, so th this here has made... It's great in a pinch, in other words. It is. So it if you is. don't have anything else and you have the hand sanitizer, there's multiple uses for it. Yeah, keep it in your go bag. I mean, this could be for everybody, anytime. Why be caught without this? And so, and also there's a mask here. And the mask is also made by Purify. And it's a nice cloth mask that works well. And keeping the mask and the Purify together in a plastic bag and a go bag is perfect. And then at home, keep a supply of this type of product at home so you don't run out of it because people ran out months ago and they, they were going all over the place. Who, who knows how long this virus is going to last, what might be next, and why be caught without it? Absolutely. So, always be prepared. That's what we always say. And then uh, the this, uh, this soap here, um, it also not only cleanses a person but also takes away the odor, which is kind of nice if you're working hard all day long. It's just a bar of soap, and um, there's nothing wrong with keeping that in a go bag. Uh, Let me say something real quick about this, because somebody asked me about this the other day. They're like, why do you need a bar of soap like this? And I said, well, this is an interesting bar of soap, because it doesn't have any scent, and it doesn't leave any scent. And for a nice segue, people who are hunters, you don't want to have any scent when you go into the field. You don't, want to, you don't want the animals to be able to smell you. And so that's what this soap was designed for. And it's actually a really good bar of soap because even ivory soap has a smell to it. This has no smell whatsoever. And it's also your basic bar of soap. Helps cleanse and sanitize. These trauma packs, uh, these are so nice. I mean, it's in a nice container. Things won't fall out of it. You keep one of these in your car, your glove compartment. You keep one in your backpack and just don't go anywhere without it. This weighs nothing, and it's got quick clot in it. It stops bleeding. This has quick clot has saved so many thousands of lives overseas. All medics are using quick clot. It's got the bandages, the gauze, and the wraps in it. It's everything you need, and you buy it, and you keep it until you need it. And then you open it up, use it, and then get another one. But these are made by Adventure Kits. It's a trauma pack, and I would go, I would not go anywhere without one of these. I, I do a lot of work outside. I do a lot of hiking and backpacking. These are always in my backpack. There's one in my truck and there's one in my home. And um, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have exactly. it. Exactly. Hey, and the other thing is, there's no shelf life on these things. They don't go bad. <laughs> The uh, North American uh, company, North American Rescue Kits, designed this pack, and this is more tactical. And in the military, we'd always have our guys carrying it one place or the other, so if they get hurt or wounded, you go to that one place and you use theirs instead of using your own. But it's nice, it's got the tourniquet, it's got the bandages and the gauze, and everybody carries one, and you use that person's if they, if they need it. But um, this here's a nice tactical pack. That's also great. You could fit that in your backpack and carry it any way you want to. And this is super important because everybody's heard about IFAX and it's always, what's an IFAK? It's an individual first aid kit. And that's basically what this is. Like you said, it's small, it's compact. You can tuck it away anywhere. And it's always good to have one. And maybe for a lot of the, us average everyday people, we'll just throw some band-aids and stuff in there too so that, hey, you get a blister, you get a cut, you do this, do that. You got something in order to treat whatever just happened to you. Yeah, they're fantastic. No, these are uh, cat tourniquets. There must be th hundreds of thousands of these overseas. Everybody carries a cat tourniquet. Everybody's carrying tourniquets now overseas, but it's not only overseas you need them. When there's ever a situation where someone has a bad bleeder, the training used to be direct pressure, you know, raise the limb, pressure points, put a bandage on it. If that bandage bleeds through, put another bandage on it, and then it'll apply a tourniquet. But that's no longer the case. Now, if there's a major bleeder, get that tourniquet on, so twist it. So how do you it. use this thing? Show, show so, me real so quick. So for instance, if you have a bleeder here, mm -hmm. you put it between the bleeder and the heart, 
and then um, you you open this up here and you cinch it down. You cinch it down four or five inches above the bleeder. You could go up here if you want to, but you just have to turn this um, and tighten it up until the bleeding stops. Mm. Until the bleeding stops. And then what happens is you cinch it down with this here. And uh, I'm so sorry if that's a little tight. No, but isn't that, the, isn't that the way you want to do it? The way you want to do it is it's not, this thing when you put it on and you're bleeding, you're probably going to put it on so tight that it hurts more than the actual bleed that you got going on. And that's okay because the reason tourniquets weren't used before for the primary source to stop the bleeding is because they were afraid they were going to lose the limb below the tourniquet. That's no longer the case. There's probably not a pulse here now, which is fine because that is stopping the flow of blood. If there's a, a fracture here in his, his arm or in his hand and it cuts some vessels, this will, will stop the bleeding. And of course, you can bleed out through your arm as well. This takes five seconds to put on a person. And if you're wrong and you didn't need the tourniquet, there's no harm done at all. And also, we always did in the, in the military, you put the time that the tourniquet was placed. Oh. And that's nice for the uh, doctors to know that, oh, tourniquet was placed 40 minutes ago. Ambulances and medical crews get to see the person, you know, within the hour after you put this on. So there's no risk of losing the, the limb anymore like they used to be. So a tourniquet, this North American backpack kit has a tourniquet in it. Of course, you can have makeshift tourniquets, but nothing works better than having this little bar here to tighten it up. These tourniquets have saved so many thousands of lives and will continue to do so, and everybody should know how to use a tourniquet. Again, using the scenario, you can have somebody fall off a ladder, somebody get in a car accident, somebody fall down the stairs, an older person fall and break the leg, and if they stop bleeding and that bleeding is not controlled, a tourniquet can control the bleeding and that could save a person's life by knowing something that takes 10 seconds to apply. Yeah, and like you said, it takes a person four minutes to bleed out and if help is five minutes away and you've got a tourniquet, you can keep that person stabilized until you know actual help can show up and, and take care of the rest. Yeah. These here I, I like a lot, just having a, a, a wrap here that you can cool yourself off in these hot days. These are here. great in Florida. Frog togs, I like the name frog togs. <laughs> yeah, it's a cooling sport towel, it weighs nothing. So those are really nice. And these, what you do with these is you take these, it's like hard as a rock right now, but when you wet it a little bit, what it does is it expands and it becomes a nice little cooling wrap that you can use, like Don said, wrap around your neck, wrap around your head. And in a trauma situation or an accident situation, helps to cool the person down, kind of keep them calm before that shock sets in. So it's always something else nice to add into your everyday first responder kit. Mm -hmm. Now, not everyone carries a weapon. More and more people are carrying them now because of the way society has turned. But uh, of course, a weapon of choice is a Glock. And it's a polymer weapon here. This is a Glock 19X and it, it weighs nothing. It's so reliable, so durable. They've dropped them off buildings, run over them. Um, they shoot, they don't, they don't have malfunctions. As a weapons instructor for many, many, many years. And every time you have a group on the range, you'll have people's hands raised up. Hey, I have this problem with my weapon. Hey, I have this problem with this weapon. Happened with every weapon system we use until the Glock came about. And then boom, <laughs> that stopped happening. And these Glocks are so reliable and durable. It's definitely my weapon of choice. Even for competitions, the Glocks are doing really well. Uh, compared to the big race guns. Hey, and let me say something real quick about the Glock because uh, something that's interesting is, yes, I'm a gun enthusiast, but I'm by no means a gun expert like some of the people that we have around here and definitely not like Don. But one of the things I learned about Glock is Glock is, as somebody shared with me, they're like the apple of the gun world. You can get accessories, holsters, whatever kind of stuff that you want to do to customize your Glock and it's a great first gun and, and exactly like what Don said, these guns were designed, let's not forget, for basically an 18 year old who's a first time person in the military and they're designed to always work and be beat up and not taken care of because what kid takes care of anything these days, right? So, <laughs> great guns. And you know, you might not be able to carry a weapon like this Glock here, but there are other things you can use as weapons. You know, a pen can work as a weapon <laughs> especially if it has a knife attached to it. <laughs> I mean, you never know if you need a letter opener or a knife or something else, but that's really nice. 
It's a pen and a knife blade. This is a very cool toy. I could definitely see where this could come in handy. And nobody knows that you got it. Very cool. I like camping and I like being outdoors and you don't carry a knife and a, spore, a fork and a spoon. You carry something like this. And it's one piece. It's um, a spoon and a fork here. And if you pull it apart, there's a knife. And the knife is hidden and it's, protect, it's protected. But this here can go in the back of your backpack. It could go anywhere. And you have a knife here. It could be used as a weapon, but you can use it for any other reason too. But I use it for camping as well. Yeah, and the, some people, I have one of these in every one of my bags and everybody used to laugh, but I, it's exactly what you said. There's sometimes when you're out and about and you need a fork or a spoon or a knife in order to cut up your food. Man, these things are great. They're made out of plastic, but it's really heavy duty. They're made by K-Bar. And like Don said, if you had to in a pinch, that knife's pretty sharp and it's made out of, pl even though it's made out of plastic. And K-Bar, boy, K-Bar, makes Navy Seals Marine Corps' favorite knife, K-Bar knife right here. Having one on your side as a SEAL or as a Marine, uh, you just felt at home. This was the knife we always <laughs> used. This is what the Marines always use, and it's a K-Bar. And this is a nice size. It's a little bit smaller than the ones we use, but it's more usable. I like it rather than the bigger size we had. This is a nice K-Bar with nice leather sheath, and it's got the serrated edge here. And that life, this knife here will last longer than my life will. <laughs> this is the last of a lifetime here. And it's American yeah. made. You know, and one of the things I learned about K-Bar knives is that a knife is not always something that you use for cutting. One of the great things about the K-Bar, especially like the bigger one, like Don was saying, man, you can use them to dig a hole. You can use these things to pry stuff up. You can really beat the crap out of these because of the full tang that it's got inside. And this one's nice because it is a nice size and it's got a nice edge on it. And you know, you got the serrated edge there. I mean, great everyday carry weapon mm -hmm. or tool. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. And then, boy, a flashlight. It's so nice to have a good flashlight. We're talking about weapons here. And yeah, that could be used as a weapon. It can be used as a weapon. And also, if somebody comes into your house and it's in the middle of the night and you put that in their eyes, they can't see and you can see what's in their hands. And you can use it as a weapon if you had to. But it's also a very solid, durable, reliable flashlight that fits really nice in your hands and um, it's a beautiful flashlight. Very and nice. And this actually just came out. This is something new from Olight, uh, one of their new models. Olight's been really blazing a trail with uh, handheld lights in the last few years. And one of the cool things about Olights is a lot of them are rechargeable, uh, which is great because, you know, batteries cost money and if you can recharge your stuff, it's always better than not. And uh, I'm like a real flashlight geek. I got like all kinds of flashlights. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. And then here, a nice pair of protective gloves. You know, nobody likes working and banging your knuckles, but this protects your knuckles, and they're, they're, uh, you don't lose any dexterity wearing these gloves. It's just a nice pair of working gloves. Yeah, and this, probably one of the things that I've used the most, I have gloves in every single one of my vehicles and backpacks because, especially where we live out in the woods, there's always down trees, there's always something. And man, like you said, it's really nice to put on a pair of gloves and not tear up your hands. And these are cool because they do have the reinforced knuckle, like Don said. But also, these are light enough in any kind of situation, you can be able to throw them on and go to work, whatever it is you gotta do. So these are made by Oakley, very nice quality glove, perfect for your everyday go bag. Yeah, and this go bag here, of course, we have two medical kits, but I would include everything that's on this table. I pick one of the two kits and I have it in here. The only thing I might add is maybe a bottle of water. And um, I would have this in the back of my trunk, back of my truck, I'd have it in my house. And if I had to bail out of my house, if I had to leave my house for whatever reason, I would always have this with me. And a go bag is designed um, differently compared to where you live and where you work and what you do. So maybe not everybody would need all of this here, but there are quite a few selections you might need. The, um, the Purify uh, hand sanitizer and mask, those come from cleanhandsandmore.com. Um, but all of these here, we talked about all the, the um, reasons you would want to have something like this. There's nothing on this table that I would not want to have in my go bag. Excellent, excellent. 
So there you have it, folks. We have an expert in the field of survival and combat medic and talking about what would be a practical start to a go bag for the average everyday person. And I, I think a good name, like I just said for that, is that's the first responder go bag. That's everybody's first responder. The bag's big enough, but small enough. You can add a few items to it, a jacket, uh, maybe a small blanket, whatever. Like Don said, you know, hey, he's a seal. They don't need water. We can just <laughs> drop him anywhere and he can survive. Um, but, you know, maybe for some of us, we want to put a bottle of water in there or something we can carry water. But otherwise, it's a great way to start. So, Don, I appreciate you coming in today oh, and sharing with us your knowledge about uh, medicine and about what you would use as a, as a great starter go bag. And uh, we look forward to having you back again. Uh, thank you, Tony. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much.